Hello, everyone, and welcome to the launch of the State of the Tropics Report. I'm Lisa Oak, and today I'm going to be introducing some of the world's most eminent authorities on a vast range of subjects concerning our planet's tropical regions. Soon, we are going to hear from Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi, winner of the 1991 Nobel Peace Prize and chair of the National League for Democracy. She will launch the report live from Yangon in Myanmar. For this launch, our audience around the world, and especially in Yangon, include diplomatic staff and representatives of the many research institutions with an interest in tropical research. We also have Burmese academics and educational representatives, and among our guests are scores of journalists. They are representing international, regional, and national media outlets. Unless they live here, many people know very little about the tropics other than what they were taught in school. Over the next hour or so, as we launch the State of the Tropics report, we'll hear about diverse subjects ranging from the threat of tropical disease, environmental challenges, and how technology and education will develop in the world's tropical regions. Our panel of eminent researchers will also look at some of the questions about a sustainable future with population growth that outstrips most other parts of the world and generates an ever-increasing demand for consumer goods and a fair place in the connected world of the future. We're going to learn about some of the keys to sustainable developments in the tropics as well. Our participants include some of the most innovative thinkers from around the world. And to meet the first of these academic leaders, we now cross live to Yangon in Myanmar to Professor Sandra Harding, the Vice Chancellor and the President of James Cook University in Australia and convener of the State of the Tropics Report. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning and welcome to those here in Yangon, in Singapore, and across other sites, including Cairns and Townsville in Australia and online. We're here today to launch a major report on the state of the world's tropics. In doing so, today will become a critical moment in reframing our understanding of global dynamics and of the power and the potential of the tropics. More than 2,000 years ago, Aristotle wrote that there are three zones of the world, the frigid zone, the temperate zone, and the torrid zone. And only one of these, the temperate zone, was a place where human beings could live. Fast forward to 2014. The tropics accounts for more than 40% of the world's population, around 80% of the world's biodiversity, and features some of the most pressing issues of our time, population growth rates ahead of the rest of the world, health and disease, environmental management, the development of governance and judicial structures, all playing out in Aristotle's torrid zone. In viewing the world as a set of dichotomies, north-south, east-west, developed-developing, Asia, the rest, Aristotle's powerful lateral notion of the world in general, and the tropics in particular, has been consigned to obscurity. But given 21st century statistics, it is well past time that we rediscover the tropics. To do so means charting the tropics, exploring it, not in ships, but through data that reveal its zonal power and potential. Three years ago, 12 universities and research institutions from around the world, dedicated to the tropics through their location or their mission, determined it was time to explore and to understand, to reprise that fundamental Aristotelian lateral conception of the world. With this in mind, the group set the parameters of an historic report on the state of the tropics. The aim of the report is to answer a very simple question. Is life in the tropics getting better? More subtly, the aim of the report is geopolitical. It is to change the way the world views itself. Today, the work is done and the report is ready. It is a very great honour that Nobel Peace Prize winner and chair of the National League for Democracy in Burma, Dor Aung San Suu Kyi, is here to launch this important work. In a short while, we will be welcoming her on stage to deliver the keynote address and to officially launch the inaugural State of the Tropics report. Before that, for our Burmese speakers, here's Ms. Thunder Line. 
ကျွန်တော်ရောက်လာကြတော့ကုန်တီရှိလူကြီးမြင်များနဲ့အဲ့သေရောများအပေါင်းကျွန်မတို့မြင်မနိုင်ငံမှာဒီမိုကရစီစ
are we all temperate enough to make sure that our world survives in the right way? And I'm not talking about temperate geographically or physically, obviously. So what can we do to make our world more temperate? How can we use our knowledge of the state of the tropics to help our whole world to be more temperate politically, socially, humanly? So the world comes down to this. We have to live not just with other human beings, but with other living beings. And how can we help to make this world a happier home for all living beings, not just for ourselves, the humans, who are, who are the bosses, as it were. But I'm not sure whether we're always the best bosses that the animals would require or would wish for. Biodiversity, I think, will prove in time to be not just uh, desirable, but necessary. And that is one of the contributions that I believe this report can make, to make us understand the importance of biodiversity, to make us understand the importance of survival, not just mere survival, but quality survival among different species, different peoples, different cultures, different attitudes. And that, to me, is what politics is about. Politics, these, in this day and age, is about connectivity. It is about inclusiveness. Exclusiveness is a word that belongs to the past. We all have to learn to live together because we are all so closely connected as never before. And when I look at all these statistics about what we have or do not have in the, in the tropics, I am I'm struck by the fact that what we need most of all is a greater, more, more flexible form of knowledge. Knowledge in Aristotle's day was different from what we think of as knowledge today. But what the kind of knowledge I'm talking about basically is awareness. Awareness of what is going on around us, what is going on further away from us, not just very close to us. And that is linked to education. So in, this is a way of, uh, a roundabout way of coming to one of my favorite topics, education. Earlier, just before we came here, I had the opportunity to discuss tropical medicine and tropical diseases with some of those who produced the report. And when we talk about diseases and control of diseases, I think we cannot avoid education, not just with regard to how to cure the diseases, Tropical medicine, I, I don't think, is simply about medicines or simply about medical uh, statistics or data or medical research. It is about education of the wider public. In order to be healthy, we need an educated public because the public must take part in looking after their own health, in looking after themselves. We discussed the matter of malaria. Malaria, but I, another disease that I think is very, very closely linked to education, general education, is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a great problem in our country because of the fact that our people are not able to take their medication regularly for, or correctly. Two reasons. Sometimes it's, uh, one is the uh, availability or not of the drugs. And secondly, is how well the people understand how they are supposed to take the drugs. So it's education, as well as, of course, finances. Now, the tropics include some of the poorest countries in the world. There is no doubt about the fact that affluence is important to a certain extent. Without the necessary means, without the necessary resources, we will not be able to look after the health or the education of our people. So everything is linked together. Health, 
education, economics, and everything should be linked together. As we progress more and more technologically, scientifically, I wonder whether we are progressing quickly enough along spiritual and intellectual, in a very broad sense, lines. Whether we are becoming not just a more competent race, I mean the human race, or are we also becoming a more, a more likable race, a race that is more likely to be good to one another, a, more, a race that is more uh, suited to be uh, to take over uh, the guardianship of the world. Because whether we like it or not, it's human beings who have to look after the world. The other living animals are not in a position to do so. We have the responsibility and the opportunity to look after the rest of the world. So starting with the tropics, how do we look after ourselves? First, we have to know about ourselves. We have to understand ourselves if we are to look after ourselves properly. I was taught uh, as a young student by, by my French teacher uh, that uh, this was the most important thing. She asked me a question. Uh, she said, if I'm to teach John Latin, what must I know first? I thought, now, Latin. And of course, she said, no, John. Unless you know John, you will not be able to teach him Latin. So if we want to progress, we have to know ourselves for what we are. And uh, we have to know ourselves from every aspect, for as, from as many aspects as we possibly can. So if for us in the tropics to know ourselves, we have to know about the other zones as well, about those beyond the tropics. We cannot limit ourselves to the tropics. We are the center of the world, and I'm saying, I, I mean this in a geograph geographical sense. I'm not trying to say that we are better than everybody else or more important, but geographically, we are at the center of the world. And so we have to know about those beyond our borders. And we want all, all of those beyond our borders to become part of what we are trying to do, which I believe from Looking very quickly through the report, I have to confess that I haven't been through it line by line or word by word, but I think uh, the report aims at making the best of what there is, building on what we have already achieved and going on to better, a better, better places and better peoples and better situations for everybody. So. I would like the tropics to be an area that invites everybody to come together, not just to help us, but to use us if necessary in order to help the rest of the world. Of course, a richer part of the, of the globe may question, what do we have to give them? But I think if you, have, if you read the report, you will no longer ask this question. There is a lot that the tropics have to give to the rest of the world. And of course, that there's a lot that the rest of the world has to give to us. So when we talk about the state of the tropics, I hope that eventually we are all talking about the state of this world, not just about one particular area. And that whatever we learn through this report, we will be able to use not just to enhance the lives of human beings and other living beings in this area, but in the whole world. So that is what politics is about. This is what I believe, that politics is about improving the lives of all those who come within its, uh, its area of influence. And its area of influence is the whole world. Speaking as a politician, I would like to say that we depend a lot on our scientists, our sociologists, our academics to help us to see the way forward better 
and clearer. But we would also like to remind them to be more open in their vision, in their view of where we should be going. Sometimes because specialists are so good at their own specialities, they lose track of other disciplines, of other needs, of other specialities, which may be as special to some others as theirs is to them. So if we go forward together with the, in the understanding that we will help one another to know more, not only that, but to use our knowledge in a more intelligent, in a more caring way. So before I, I suppose I have to pronounce towards the end the official launching of the report, I would like to say that the key word of my keynote address for me is care. That's why I've kept it until last, a more caring world. I would like this report to be able to contribute towards a more caring world for all of us. And there is so much that we can learn from this report to make us better carers, to care for our environment, to care for one another, to care for those who are different from us, and to understand that those who are different from us are just as worthy of care as we are. So that is the only contribution I can make to a report that is so complete, that is so valuable, that I can only say thank you to all of you who have compiled it. And I would like to say that I truly respect and admire the work that you have done. And I do believe that what you have done will help us in our work, which is to try to create a more caring world. So may I now say that the report on the state of the tropics is officially launched for the betterment of our world. Thank you. Noble Laureate Do Aung San Suu Kyi for launching the inaugural State of the Tropics report with such wonderful words of inspiration. Thank you very much. Công ty Tân Đại Dương là một trong những công ty du học đầu tiên và hàng đầu tại Việt Nam, được thành lập bởi đội ngũ các nhà quản lý và tư vấn du học có nhiều năm kinh nghiệm trong ngành giáo dục cũng như được tu nghiệp và đào tạo ở nước ngoài. Với hơn 10 năm kinh nghiệm, Tân Đại Dương tự hào là nhà tư vấn du học chuyên nghiệp cho các du học sinh tại các nước trên thế giới, đặc biệt là Mỹ, Úc, Singapore, Anh Quốc, Hà Lan, Thụy Sĩ v.v. Cùng với đội ngũ tư vấn viên chuyên nghiệp, chúng tôi cung cấp các dịch vụ uy tín và trọn gói cho ngành du học du lịch Mỹ, bao gồm xử lý chọn bộ hồ sơ đi Mỹ từ A đến Z, kể cả các hồ sơ khó đã từng rớt visa hoặc không đủ tài chính, tư vấn chọn trường tại tất cả các tiểu bang ở Mỹ. Chúng tôi tự hào là đại diện chính thức của hàng trăm trường đại học cao đẳng, trung học phổ thông tại Mỹ, hướng dẫn các thủ tục xin visa, chứng minh tài chính, hướng dẫn điền form, dạy phỏng vấn du học du lịch Mỹ, khai giảng hàng tháng các lớp học phỏng vấn, đảm bảo cho học sinh có được sự tự tin trả lời được mọi câu hỏi của lãnh sự quán đặt vé máy bay, sắp xếp nhà ở, ký túc xá cho du học sinh. Với phương châm hoạt động là uy tín, chất lượng và mong muốn định hướng cho học sinh Việt Nam một nền giáo dục tiên tiến, môi trường học tập và sinh hoạt an toàn, Tân Đại Dương cam kết sẽ là người bạn đồng hành cùng học sinh Việt Nam trên đường tới chân trời tri thức. Mọi chi tiết xin liên hệ công ty Tân Đại Dương chuyên du học Mỹ, mặt tiền 148/1 Trần Quang Khải, phường Tân Định, quận Nhất, Thành phố Hồ Chí Minh, điện thoại 0838484879098900698990. Website www.tandaidung.edu.vn